Hi everyone, it's Chris. While I'm not going to be doing a lot of vlogs, um, I am for this one section. I want to do a series on making underwear and making uh, cloth pads. They are going to be in one grouping for a good reason. I am going to be making period underwear. A lot of people keep seeing the brand Thinks out there, and I know there's a few others. They're very expensive, and I know I can make them a lot cheaper for the reason that I've made one pair that I really like, and I'm going to make a few more. Um, for this one, though, I'm going to explain why I do not use disposables anymore. I have not used a disposable period product in, I want to say, about five and a half years now and the reason I switched is because I used to have a period that was 15 to 17 days long and I would have an off cycle of 14 days that's a long period and for at least half of it it was a heavy flow um, about five and a half six years ago I was using the same brand I've used since I was a teenager and the I actually developed a rash from it I broke out I there was no explanation as to why um, my doctor said that that was absolutely 100% the cause of the rash and gave me antibiotics and said that I need to look at alternatives um, so I started thinking about it. I was like, well, if period products were not invented and used until 1880 to 1888, depending on what site you find the information on, there's debate between the 1880s and the early 80s and the late 80s, but the 1800s. Well, people have been around for a lot longer than that. They had to have used something. The question was, what were they using? There's a term, a lot of people have heard it. She's on her rag. Well, the term rag was actually used in the mid-centuries between about the 1500s to actually the early 1900s um, it was because they used to wear a belt that they would tie a rag or multiple depending on their flow and cycle that time and they would tie it in the front and the back and it would drape all the way down and under well that's basically using cloth they did not have underwear that we have today because they didn't have elastic. And if you really stop and think, okay, they didn't have the same underwear we have. So they used a belted form to do the same basic thing of catching the blood as it comes out. They went through and had little problems. So few problems. Well, getting into researching it, I got into thinking, okay, there has to be something. Well, there is. There's a movement of using cloth and reusable um, menstrual products. Now, a lot of people will say, okay, these are cloth pads. These are things I personally made. Um... I don't care if they're perfect or not those are what the pads are I found something really crazy online it was using a hundred percent cotton thread or yarn the yarn is small it's about three to four dollars for about I believe it's three and a half ounces of yarn and people started making crocheted pads. 
I wanted to see if it worked. As crazy as it sounds, this actually does work. It works very well. I started using it as a backup for my cups and I ended up finding out that I used it as a, um, I think it was more or less like a panty liner one day because it was on top of my stack and I wasn't really thinking about it. Well, I happened to start my period that day, didn't realize it, I was out and about and I have a heavy flow on my first two days. Well, I had this on. I didn't even realize it till I got home. I had zero leaks in a crocheted pad. And I was like, really? No leaking on a heavy cycle. And it was rather full. I mean, it was rather full by the time I changed it. So as crazy as it sounds, again, that even works. There's also um, inner labial pads or LIPs, lips. Um, I made a few of those just to find out if I like them or not. I'm on the fence. I use them sometimes, not all the time. Um, I wear pads, believe it or not, every single day. I wear my cloth pads every day as liners because you sweat and everything else and believe it or not they keep you dry they really do now a lot of people say well I only wear tampons okay here's our tampons these are two different menstrual cups they are both medical grade silicone um, this one is my Yuki cup it's really firm it's a firm firm cup reason I got that is because I do swim in a swimming pool so I swim quite a bit I wanted something that was not gonna leak believe it or not this does not leak when I'm in the pool and the reason it doesn't leak is because it is a firm firm cup I actually really like this cup I've used it for a long time the other cup I have is a moon cup it's a softer cup and I don't use this one as much because it's a smaller cup it doesn't hold as much but I do use it because sometimes believe it or not your vagina swells up and it will contract and sometimes you'll have it where it's really tight and it's uncomfortable to wear the bigger cup so I always have this one um, I did this for a medical reason I did not do this just to save money I did not do this for um, for the fun of it or to try it or experimenting I did a lot of research before I started this whole quest walking down and I found that I really did like it. I found an awesome YouTuber. Um, it's called Precious Stars. She does, she has thousands of videos. She focuses on women's health and primarily um, RUMPS, which stands for Reusable Menstrual Products. She does everything that you could ever imagine want to know she has it I'm not going to do comparisons that is not my thing I am not going to do reviews on products again not my thing um, the only product I've ever gotten that's made by someone else besides my cups obviously I cannot make silicone molds and uh, medical grade period products I'm not that good but uh, Lexi liner this is a Lexi liner um, I got this for free to try it out this is the first thing I've ever gotten and 
I found out I can't use it. I used it once and I had the same problem I did with my disposables. The mirror, the material they have on the back of this, if you can see it's a little shiny and you can hear the little scrunching. It's the same material that is used in windbreakers and light um, raincoats. It's not very breathable. A lot of people say it is. It's not. It really isn't. I tried it. I don't like it. But I, again, I wanted to know if I could make this stuff myself. And why not? So I started out. At the time, I went and got a serger and started making a bunch of pads. These are personal. These are not going anywhere. They're not set, something I would sell because my serging doesn't isn't perfect. But I figure nobody looks in my underwear. I don't really care. Um, and I started playing with patterns. I started like most people will, going out and getting, um, taking your favorite uh, disposable pad, tracing it, giving yourself a little seam allowance, and going like that. I did that for a while, and I found that it's not as easy as you think it is, and I really didn't like them. I don't really care for the rounded tips like this is this has a nice big round to it I don't like them they're not easy to sew and believe it or not on the ones that I have around are the ones that I bleed through I started I got lazy when I was making some and I did a couple square ones I found out those are my favorite because I haven't leaked on my square ones. What ends up happening is if I start bleeding up near the top, um, it just goes to the sides so it doesn't bleed off. That's why I actually started using just these for myself. I like the square better because I don't leak in them. I have never once bled through a cloth pad never once if the pads not positioned correctly in my underwear I might bleed over the top or the back but if it's positioned correctly I have not had a problem with them overflowing and leaking out the back I only use a fleece backing one it's readily available two the PUL has been very expensive and the only PUL available in my area are children patterns and I didn't want the baby patterns in my underwear I don't know why I just not my thing I don't want little alphabets and cutesy little baby things not while I like that stuff I have my limits so I do have a bunch of stuff and I've only made my pads I've like I said I only got one that's commercially made while there are lots of places you can get them Etsy Amazon um, people have sell them on Facebook I mean you can go all over the place to find these things there are websites that sell them precious stars actually has a website that sells pads um, I decided I was going to make some try them if I liked them then I'd buy them well I made a bunch of them I made three months worth believe it or not and I can go for three consecutive months without washing my pads have I ever done that absolutely not I wash my pads regularly I wash them after every cycle um, just like I sterilize my cups after every cycle. Now, 
in the past, I started thinking about it. How much did I spend on all my pads? To date, I have spent $190 for all the pad products, everything I need in order to make these. I have cotton tops. All of my cores are uh, flannel. I love the flannel. I do not like the bamboo. I do not like a lot of the other um, toppings and absorptions that you can get. The Some people use actual terry cloth, which is a bath towel or a washcloth. Those are really thick. I didn't like them. I found the flannel absorbs the absolute most. It is very breathable and I fell in love with it. The upsides to using these products, I no longer, there's no smell to them. I mean, I have no smell to my period products at all. My period went from a 17, 15 to 17 days down to five. I have a period that's five days long which was a huge shock. It absolutely amazed me that I went from almost a two week period down to five days. I was like, you know what? That alone was worth it. The cramping that I've had in the past few years, totally gone. My cycles are actually very light now which I didn't understand. How did I go from really heavy cycles to a light cycle? I went from having to change my disposable pad every hour to two hours to I can go all night without having to change it, even on my heaviest day. I never believed it was possible, but once I switched, I found out it was. I was on a trip when I started my cycle a little early. I did not have my dispose I did not have my reusables on me. And I ended up using disposables. I ended up with the cramping, the heavy blood, and it went from my five days that I loved up to nine days. So I'm going to personally say absolutely this is the reason that it's shorter because I do not have the chemicals that are in the disposables. And yes, there are chemicals in them. The companies that tell you no, no, no. They do not wash and sanitize the cotton absorption inside the pads. Some companies are underhanded and they actually put chemicals in that make you bleed more. That is what causes the heavy cramping. That is what causes the heavy blood flow. Not using those, totally worth it because it saved a lot. I've spent $190 exclusively on buying my period products. That does include my two cups, and they are pricey. I think my Yuki cup was about $47 when I purchased it, and my Moon cup was about, I want to say about $37. But I have been using them for five consecutive years. No problem. They'll go and keep going and going and going. When you start getting cracks, visible cracking in your cup, that's when you need a new cup. They do stain. These were translucent and now they are stained up. But the staining doesn't matter. It's usability that matters. Um, the other thing is an average woman spends $25 per month on period products. I 
in the course that I've been using the reusables, I should have spent one thousand eight hundred and ninety five dollars. I don't know why that came up to that odd number, but that's what it came up to. Um, I sat back and I thought about it. I just saved almost $2,000 in five years. Not only that, the average woman in the course of their life, um, for menstruation anyway, will use approximately one million two hundred thousand pounds worth of period products that go into the landfill. Okay, that's quite a bit. That's a lot. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We can actually save our environment by switching, but I did it for a medical reason that worked for me. Um, and it's saving a ton of money. One big thing that I found is that when women end up in homeless shelters, on poverty row, they can't afford period products. Then you have to think, well, why aren't they using these? They're easy to clean, they're easy to use, and it would save low-income families a lot of money. Um, not only that, but I do make quite a few of these out of scraps. This is a scrap piece of flannel from a previous project. I really have nothing to use this on right now, but I can make a period product. I can make a pad out of this. A reusable pad no problem just take me a few minutes to make it throw it together and I can donate it and I have donated quite a few of these to women's shelters the reason I've done that it helps other people these all get washed in the washing machine I have a couple that have stained um, this purple used to be really vibrant like this, and you can see it's faded. No problem with it used, being used, it's just faded. The reason this one's a little thin is this only has one inside. This is a panty liner. This one, I believe, has three layers, and I do use this one quite a bit either three or four and again this used to be a really bright pink now it's faded out quite a bit I got that specific fabric for 89 cents a yard so granted I bought everything they had because it was 89 cents a yard you don't find fabric that cheap not often and not a hundred percent quilters cotton either and that's what the topping is on this. Um, I do use flannel topped. Or basically I will take the flannel and not put a topper on it. If I, it's a pretty flannel. Um, and I something like this I probably wouldn't put a topper on. Because this is pretty color. Something plain I would. Something like this I would. But... My reasons for using it basically boil down to I ended up with a lot of health benefits from it. I ended up saving thousands of dollars and I am no longer going to be, I mean, I don't make pads for myself anymore. I have made them for other people, but I don't do it for myself. I have a large supply and I am not changing them or thinning them out. 
I know I can make them with ease. I am not going to go ahead and make something for no reason. Anything I make in the period products will either be a giveaway or for sale. I am not going to keep them. Um, and I believe that some of these I'm going to do exclusively for sale on my Patreon page. And the reason being is pads do take quite a bit of time to make. And I've gotten into making quilted pads. And I have one just off camera here. I made a cute little quilted pad. And I was having fun making it. I just wanted to see if I could do it, really. But it's um, never been used. All new materials. And when I sell period products, that's all I'm going to have is all new materials in it. I will not do a reusable material. I just don't think it's sanitary. I do not sell old ones. I want all new that way. You know that it's a good product but if you don't like the idea of doing of these don't watch these videos if you want to learn more I highly highly recommend going to precious stars and watching her videos um, I have done these um, talks with my homeschool group and she gave me permission to go ahead and uh, basically promote her site because she is an expert. She is young enough to be my child because I do have a child her age. But she is an absolute expert, knows her stuff very well. So, yes, I do say go, if you're interested, watch what she does. Um, if you want to purchase products, again, I will have some on my Patreon page and I am going to be doing some giveaways when I post the, um, videos on how to make quilted pads. Again, this is just the first one I've done with quilting, so I didn't do the wings in it. I just wanted to see how it came out. But for now, I'm going to end the video and say if you're interested in watching these, please do. Again, I am not doing reviews on period products. There are quite a few YouTubers out there that do them. I've already recommended one that I find absolutely brilliant. And... For future sake, I will have these available and they will be custom orders only. I am not going to make a bunch of them and sit on an inventory with these. I will do custom orders only. So, that is why I do use these products. Why I use the cloth menstrual products. And why I'm going to be making for personal use and... I'm going to be doing some more, um, basically their menstrual is taking a cloth pad, combining it with underwear and poof. But for now, have a wonderful day. Keep watching if you're interested in how I make these pads. And yes, I will eventually have one up on how I did the crocheted pad and it will Believe it or not, if you try it, you will be surprised as I was. So, have a wonderful day or evening, and we'll see you next time.